Hello, everybody. Our project name is Dolly. We are group 31. My name is Uygar Baran. I'm a computer engineering student. I worked on the direction finding interfacing and main logic. Hi, everyone. My name is Jaime Borges, and I worked in the motor, motor systems, distance sensing, and mechanical design and assembly. Hello, everyone. My name is Jaquan Foy. I'm an electrical engineering student. Uh, I worked on a part selection and hardware design. Hi, my name is Kristen Ling. I'm an electrical engineering student, and I also worked on the part selection, hardware design, and the assembly of the project. Our project is an automatic platform dolly that is able to follow the user while carrying a small load. The goal of this presentation is to go over our major engineering specifications and how we achieve them as we implemented this idea. After this, we will also go over challenges faced along the way. Here we have all the requirements we want Dolly to be able to do. Highlighted are three major requirements. We want Dolly to be able to carry a load of 20 pounds at a speed of two to three miles per hour. We also want Dolly to be able to locate the user at a plus slash minus 45 degree resolution at 80% accuracy. Our last major requirement is to have a full range of motion at least 45 degree increments over 180 degrees. The first key engineering spec will focus on the capability of the motor system that was selected. We wanted our motor system to be robust enough to be able to carry a load of about 20 pounds while maintaining a walking speed of about 2 to 3 miles per hour in order to follow the user. This test shows Dolly carrying a load of 20 pounds shown by two 10 pound dumbbells. We start at the zero inch mark and we measure the time as it travels. As you can see from the recording, it ends at the 127 inch mark. We were able to calculate the speed by using the distance traveled divided by the time. As seen from the video, the device started at the zero inch mark and traveled 127 inches over the course of 2.69 seconds. This means that the speed was approximately 47.2 inches per second which is equivalent to 2.68 miles per hour. This slide shows the results of repeating the speed tests. As you could see, the tests always resulted in a speed of over two miles per hour, satisfying this key specification. The second key engineering specification focuses on the direction finding accuracy of the system. For our direction finding system, we are implementing Angle of Arrival, or AOA, which runs on the Bluetooth Low Energy Protocol. As a bare minimum for DALI to function as desired, the team decided that the direction finding method should be able to detect the direction of the user with a 45 degree resolution at 80% accuracy. To implement AOA, we are using the Scilabs AOA antenna board located on DALI with a transmitting tag that the user will carry. The implementation of AOA ended up surpassing the original direction finding goals and has a much finer resolution, as shown in the following test. Before viewing our direction finding demonstration, this photo shows our setup. The AOA breakout board includes the antenna array, Bluetooth module, and RF components of the hardware. The AOA breakout board connects to the main evaluation kit of Silicon Labs through connectors and communicates with the AOA transmitter tag which will be located on the user through Bluetooth. The Silicon Labs Evaluation Kit communicates IQ samples to the Raspberry Pi through a USB connector. The Raspberry Pi is capable of running calculations with these samples to convert them into angles of the AOA tag relative to the AOA antenna board. The Raspberry Pi then outputs the calculated angle to the STM32 Evaluation Kit through UART. Along with our testing setup, we also have a monitor which shows the calculated angles. The program that's running on the STM32 evaluation kit is as follows. If the angle received on the STM32's end is between 40 degrees and 50 degrees, then an LED will turn on, otherwise it will turn off. I'll show the LED. Here is the STM32 evaluation kit. There's an LED that's already turned on. That's not the LED I am talking about. The LED that I mentioned is to the right of this. Now we will move on to the demonstration of the direction finding evaluation. 
currently it's off because the tag is around 130 degrees so now what I'm going to do is go around with the tag around the areas that the range I mentioned is not in so I'm going around with the tag and now I'm gonna bring the tag into that range to show that the LED actually does turn on as you guys can see it actually turns on currently it's turning on and off because I'm right at the limit of 50 and uh, 51 and yeah, now I'm keeping it within the range and it's on now I'm gonna show what happens when I move it around and as you guys can see it is pretty sensitive as soon as it gets into that range it turns on and then when it gets out it turns off now I'm gonna keep it at that range to show that the LED is constantly on this testing concludes the key engineering specification number two which is the ability to detect the direction of the user with 45 degree resolution at 80 percent accuracy in order to see how precise the measured angles were we placed the tag at a set angle for various angles and read the first five angles that were printed on the terminal these results showed that the aoa kit was capable of detecting the correct angle with an accuracy within plus or minus three degrees at all times, satisfying our key engineering specification. The third and final key engineering spec focuses on Dolly's ability to steer. In order to follow the user's direction, the team decided that Dolly should have the capability of turning in any direction with a minimum resolution of 45 degrees. This specification was written in the early stages of the project when the team thought a different steering method would be utilized which had limited directions for steering. Since then, the team had decided to use a different steering method that has a continuous range and is not limited by resolution. A more appropriate way of interpreting this specification for the new steering system would be to check if the device could turn the, to the user within 45 degrees of accuracy rather than 45 degrees of resolution, which was satisfied. As seen by the demonstration, Dolly is able to turn to the user within a 45 degree beam width centered at approximately the location of the center of the antenna board. The code running demonstrating stops where it sees a user within plus or minus 20 degrees from the center in the worst case scenario. Dolly is also able to rotate the full 360 degrees as defined by the specification. Four out of five tests passed and the one that failed was quickly corrected. This demonstrates that the device is able to accurately steer towards the user satisfying the key specification. This demonstration also reinforces key specification number two and verifies that Dolly is able to find the direction of the user when the AOA kit is integrated in the full system. One of the secondary engineering specs that we began evaluating was the ability to detect obstacles in order to stop and avoid them. This will be implemented through the use of an ultrasonic distance sensor. This video demonstrates the capability of Dolly when avoiding collisions with obstacles. One of the challenges we faced along the way was finding the right battery and motor system combinations. In the beginning of designing Dolly, we needed to select a motor system that would be robust enough to carry a heavy load at a reasonable speed. Since our group has very limited experience with mechanical design, there was additional time needed to be spent researching motors and gearing systems that would work for this design. This did not only delay decisions on a motor system selection, but also the battery selection because motors require a large amount of current and a higher capacity batteries quickly became more and more expensive. The more robust motors on the market also quickly got more and more expensive. Because of this, the amount of torque and speed required needed to be calculated before selecting the motor system and battery. The motor system included the motor, gearing system, wheel material, and wheel dimensions. All these components have an effect on the torque and speed, so they all needed to be considered simultaneously while considering the battery. Considering all of these together quickly got complicated and took us longer to select parts that, than anticipated, which delayed progress on other aspects of the project. Another challenge faced along the way was that the first version of the PCB did not work properly. Since we decided to use switching regulators for our design, 
we made sure that the components for the regulator circuit would be placed as close together as possible to keep high frequency nodes as small as possible. However, the components ended up being placed too close together with only five mils of clearance at some spots. This resulted in voltage regulators that would sometimes work perfectly and sometimes malfunction due to an accidental short. This video demonstrates that the regulators were working perfectly fine in the beginning because all of the indicator LEDs were on, but then partway through the 3.3 volt indicator LED turns off because the regulator malfunctioned even though nothing was touched or altered in the test. When we suspected that clearance might have been our issue, we decided to re-solder the circuit. Once we had a clean soldering job that was working perfectly, a layer of nail polish was applied to the regulator circuit. This acts as both a physical barrier for materials such as solder dust that could cause an accidental short and also raises the relative permittivity of the area surrounding the pads in the case that the issue is actually arcing rather than physical shorts. The nail polish serves the same purpose as conformal coating used in professional applications, but was more readily available to us. After adding the layer of nail polish, the regulators no longer malfunctioned. Although the nail polish did allow our board to function properly, a second version of the board was still created using revisions from what we learned from the previous board. Not only did we space out the components to have 30 mils of clearance rather than 5 mils for the voltage regulators, we also included several components for electronic protection after damaging several microcontrollers from the previously malfunctioning regulators. This included the addition of fuses, TVS diodes, and a shock key diode for reverse polarity protection. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. This concludes our final demonstration of Dolly. <laughs>